Hello and welcome to Always Bored Never Boring. When I post this it will be Easter Monday and I should hopefully be sleeping off one too many chocolate eggs. It will also be April the 1st. I can't stand pranks so don't expect any of that nonsense here, but nevertheless, all things considered, I thought we could have a bit of fun today with a new listicle. Say it with me, the algorithm loves a listicle. And today we are going to settle the big question, we're going to do some hard hitting journalism. Which board game has the best picture of people playing the game on the back of the game? As always, there are rules. 1. I can only select games from my own collection. 2. If a different edition of a game I own qualifies, the edition I have doesn't. 3. If I've forgotten I own a game or I can't be bothered to get it out of storage, it doesn't qualify. And 4. This is the big one. The picture has to be on the back of the box. Why? I don't know, because those are the rules I came up with. With that out of the way, let's begin our top 7 pictures of people playing the game on the back of the game. And do remember, listicles are a sham, it doesn't really matter. In 7th place, it's Enchanted Forest from 1982, a classic by Ravensburger. Actually, one of the most beautiful children's games ever, with a board illustration that makes you want to hop into this fairy tale land and explore. It's a simple race game with a memory element where you are peeking under the trees to see what treasure is hiding there. And look at this cracking photograph on the reverse. It's instantly losing points for being in black and white and for a lack of really clear image of the game in progress, but just look at that composition. It's clearly Sunday afternoon, Dad's been busy at work recently trying to get that senior accounting position that's opened up on the third floor, but today he's dressed down in his favourite sweater vest for family time. And Mum there, absolutely cheating as she takes a little peek under the tree at the same time as her youngest son, who is taking it all very seriously. Or maybe he's just upset they dressed him in dungarees for the photo shoot. What really sells it is the wallpaper, and the fact they appear to be playing the game in the nook under the staircase. Another Ravensburger game slips into the list at number 6, it's the 1983 edition of Scotland Yard. I think most people probably know this game or have at least heard of it. One player is Mr X and is attempting to elude the other players who are the cops. It's a hidden movement game and it can be incredibly tense playing as the villain, who has a genuinely hard job of staying ahead of the cops. For the picture on the back, Ravensburger have captured the drama impeccably. Only two younger players, this is no game for little kids, this is serious adult business, and you could cut the tension with a knife. Look at that side eye Big Sister is giving Mum. She knows Mum is making a bad play, but Mum just won't listen. And Dad is looking very smug with himself. Dads are always better at board games than they let on. We are deducting points for being black and white, a lack of clarity on the board, and that dull background. Where are they playing? The basement? At number 5 we have Legend of Zagor, the fighting fantasy board game from Ian Livingston that really talks. I reviewed this game on the channel recently and I will link to that review in the video description below, but this is a simple dungeon crawler with as much chrome as they could paste onto it. A battery operated computer randomises events in the dungeon, picks on heroes and controls the monsters, so everybody at the table gets to be a hero. Not that this is a co-op game though, every hero is out for themselves. And on the back of the box? So much text. So much text in fact, they have had to compose their photograph of kids playing so they are sitting in each other's laps. This is no way to play a game, especially when you have cards you are trying to keep hidden from the other players. But look, it's the 90s and we're playing an adventure game. No girls allowed, this is a boys club now. And floppy hair is all the rage. Those centre partings with the curtains. Yeah, I had that haircut. Everybody looks like they are having spectacular fun, grins all round, the kid in the middle quite clearly has two spells that are going to wreck his mate's day and he is just waiting to drop the hammer. The kid on the left didn't get the memo that it was an informal gathering and has decided to come to games night in a dress shirt, good for him, at least he's undone the top button and lost the tie. I'm deducting marks for the squashed composition, but mainly for the lack of an interesting background and the fact the gameplay is clearly staged. There's no way the heroes would be this spread out through the dungeon without having killed a single monster or revealed at least one tile that had to be removed from the board or left face up. In fourth place we have Crystal Maze from 1991. Based on the awesome television series where a group of contestants had to undertake different challenges, some of which were designed by Games Workshop, to win crystals. 
This board game, which I have covered before on the channel, attempts to recreate all the fun and adventure. And doesn't. We actually get a sneaky little picture on the front of the box showing three children having more fun than seems realistic. That picture is instantly disqualified though, it's the back of the box we need to see. And we are absolutely spoiled here. Four images of the game in action. Okay, that first one is also disqualified, someone's hand doesn't count, but those other three. As with Legend of Zagor, they are tightly cropped, composed so our poor models have to share a chair, and don't they look like they are having a good time? Well, actually, in the shots of the two of them together they do, that shot of the girl on her own, that's less convincing. More of a rictus grin with a thousand yard stare. You can almost see the thought bubble coming out of her head as she contemplates whether this was really worth the five quid pay packet. Overall though, the models have done a fantastic job of concealing quite how bloody frustrating this game is, and you have to love the variety of images, even if they do appear to be playing the game in the cold black void of deep space. At number 3 we start getting to the really good stuff. It's the Dungeons & Dragons fantasy adventure board game from 2003, a game I have covered extensively on the channel and intend to do more coverage of in the future. Let's get straight to the back of the box. This is a good one. All the hero players are still sharing a chair, but at least there is a respectable distance between them and the Dungeon Master. And what really sells this one is the acting. Look at those expressions from the heroes. The side-eye, the glare, and the mocking laugh. These boys were bringing their A-game. You have to love how they have integrated the background art as well. Those monsters are leaping into our world to attack the players. It's cheesy, but it is a decent reflection of how a good game can really pull you into another world and make you feel like you are having a real adventure. What we are really missing is a menacing facial expression from the Dungeon Master. Otherwise, this is top draw. At number 2, a game I am sure you all knew would be here, it's HeroQuest from 1989. I think we can cut to the chase here and immediately check out the back of the box without any further introduction. Ah, this one really is great. It's got so many plus points. The atmospheric lighting, especially the up lighting on Morkar's face emphasising his evil expression, the accurate positioning of the players around the table, and that gorgeous backdrop setting the scene. All the acting is spot on. The kid on the right has a look of wonder, probably playing his first game, while the more established player on the left leans forward with a what are you going to do now expression. At the same time, Morkar waits menacingly to spring a trap. Like the game itself, the picture tells a story. It should be noted, the game they are using is a prototype just as it was in the well-known TV advert. I'm not deducting points for that though because it's nice to see the original sculpts, the different doors and furniture pieces, and the alternative format for the character boards. I am, however, deducting points for the clearly staged dungeon. No game of Hero Quest looks like this. The heroes are all over the place, half the doors are closed and the monsters are just milling about. In the bottom left there's even a skeleton with a treasure chest in a room with no doors. And why is there a rat in the corridor? Now we are nearly at the end of this ridiculous list, but before we announce the blatantly obvious number one, let's take a quick look at a few notable disqualifications. We have Dog's Body from the Berwick Masterpiece series published in 1975. There is a spectacular full colour photograph on the front, packed with human drama. Look at that girl on the right, she's being a little stinker, and the boy in the middle has found the whole jape rather amusing. Meanwhile, the girl on the left is thinking, he's my boyfriend, I will claw your eyes out Susan. You have to note, there are more girls in the photo than boys. I think that might be because the game features more fluffy animals than it does orcs protecting treasure chests full of gold. Oh. I didn't know anything about the gold standard, I'm afraid, but I do love little kittens. <laughs> They're so soft and furry. Of course, this game is automatically disqualified because the picture is on the front of the box. Next we have the 1985 edition of Ghost Castle, the UK version of Witch Witch. This is just a masterpiece of kids playing the game on the game photography perfect mood lighting, expressions of shock and awe, and a superimposed image of the board so you can get a nice clear look at all that beautiful board art. Alas, as with Dog's Body, the picture is on the front of the box. Curse my own arbitrary rules. And finally, our last notable omission, and probably one of the best examples of the craft. It's Battle Masters, the third collaboration between MB and Games Workshop, which came out in 1992. 
the picture on this box isn't messing about. It fills the canvas, and believe me, that's not a small canvas. We have two rivals sitting on opposite sides of the massive plastic battle mat, one in contemplation, hand on chin, one gleefully sending his knights into battle. And this is all truly superb, even down to the background showing the two warring factions preparing to fight. They did a really good job of showcasing the epic scale of this game. Splendid work. Unfortunately, I don't have a copy of Battle Masters in my collection yet, so this one didn't make the cut. Which brings us to number one, Space Crusade from 1990. I think anybody who has seen the back of the box or who knows my love for this game will have guessed this was taking the number one slot. This is absolutely glorious. It's got it all and more. Three players huddled around the prototype board, uplit faces a picture of joy and wonder as they see a futuristic battle underway on their tabletop. We get to see some of the original sculpts for the miniatures, original art for the components, and it's all framed beautifully with the Giga-esque biomechanical border art. Sure, they are a player short for the four player game they have set up, and the isolated player appears to be controlling a faction of the marines rather than the alien forces as you would expect, and the game that's underway is pure bedlam with miniatures on the board that shouldn't have been revealed yet, but these are minor gripes. Overall, this is a great image with lots of lovely details, like the box out with the Voxcom narration ending with the ominous net clear, no further transmissions. The background art showing a little marine peeking out from around the corner and a lumbering dreadnought coming to play, and even the blue computer screen displaying a string of absolute gibberish. There is a real sense of location, of setting and purpose. This image captures what it feels like to play Space Crusade, and for me, it is the best picture of kids playing the game on the back of the game. Which brings this very silly video to a close. Let me know your thoughts in the comments because that is it from me for now. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, please consider pressing the like button. If you really like this video, please consider subscribing if you don't already do so. And hopefully, I'll see you all again very soon. Bye bye everyone. Bye bye.